Well, today for church, I'd like to share with you that we're going to do a memory of Brother Rodney Bell. I searched all this week and finally I was able to locate a worship service that uh, Brother Bell and I did together last year. And you're going to enjoy it. Uh, it comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Uh, be preparing that reading with the Sister Mary. Uh, Matthew, the 25th chapter. Also, it should be reading from uh, the Old Testament, uh, from Isaiah, uh, the 25th chapter. But uh, scriptures this morning uh, were when we were together. Uh, Deanne was on keyboard, and uh, Brother uh, Sonny was here with his sax. And uh, Rodney Bell and I had a, a wonderful service of preaching and being with the Lord and His Spirit. So today, uh, in memory and, and, and the grief that I'm, I'm feeling for my brother and friend that came and served our church so well, but was just a good man and God. He had just come home from bearing his mother. Enjoy this service. Um, many are called. Yet few are chosen. You might remember this. Are you one of the few that God has called and chosen to glorify His holy name, to glorify His kingdom, to glorify the unity of His work? Be prayerful. Sing with us, pray with us, and lift up God with us. At the end of the sermon, uh, you'll see a, a nice uh, portfolio of. Uh, Brother Bill, that Mary, who just got back on, on Friday, we waited wait for her to be in on Thursday, but she didn't get in the Friday. So Mary's here, and she put together such a beautiful uh, memorial of, of Rodney. Uh, church, uh, let us pray together for all those who've lost their COVID-19 and all that we need to encourage to get their vaccines to stay here and be with God. The Lord bless
beautiful singing this morning. We are coming to now is in all true worships. We we'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth. As we move forward in our worship service today, we're going to go immediately to our call and our prayer. We're going to have a great welcome and then the reading of the scriptures and then a delightful opportunity to hear God in song and just a word from the Lord and then we'll have our opportunity to hear and then to pray and bless in the benediction and then to glorify our God where we are. So that's what we're going to do today. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And we want everybody to join with us. Yes. Uh, we're going to take a pause here for a second and just pray amen and then we'll be back. Good morning, Miracles of Faith Community Church. It's your council president, Kimberly Humphrey. Uh, it's truly an honor to be here today and to see all of your beautiful faces. And yes, I said see your beautiful faces because as I am speaking into this camera, I am envisioning each and every one of your warm smiles and all of your hugs and that um, I've come to grow to miss so much. So with that, um, I wanted to say I asked Pastor for maybe a couple minutes on this Worldwide Communion Sunday only because, um, A, what better Sunday to do it, and two, I just feel um, a connection uh, being a commun Worldwide Communion Sunday as I took communion in my home, um, all, but feeling as if I was just right there in the church home. I hope that you are able to have that same embodied experience as well. Um, with that, I wanted to say um, to everyone who is viewing our church, Miracles of Faith, are doing some wonderful things. So if you have not received your newsletter um, from our First Lady, please let us know, but you will be able to see some of those wonderful things that are going on. But I just want to highlight very briefly a heartfelt thanks to our music ministry. You're doing a fabulous job in just fulfilling us with the spirit and keeping each and every ounce of our, our bodies moving, filled with the spirit from the sounds, from the piano, the voices, the horns that you bring us each week. So thank you. For our videographers, thank you for, for bringing it all together so that we can even do this in, in, in worship in, in each week. So thank you for that. You have not missed a beat since this pandemic. For our pastor who gives us a word with such conviction, with such poise, but also gives us the knowledge we need to go out here and be merciful and to be impactful week after week and to serve. And so thank you, Pastor, for that word and for delivering us um, that message each and every Sunday. And then our, our uh, food ministry, you have come together and, and when we didn't even know how we would feed those in need through the pandemic, you've made sure that we've maintained a ministry. Even when our, our givers stopped giving as much, we still found ways through many other facets. So thank you for continuing that food program and really embodying what Miracles of Faith is, which is bringing miracles to those who otherwise may not know where to turn. So thank you for your work. And last but not least, we have a group of individuals that faithfully come together for Bible study every Thursday. And not only are you just being so obedient with the Lord and studying his word, but you are taking time out of your day to pray for us. You're praying for our congregation. You're praying for the communities. You're praying for the church, the pastor, the first lady. You're praying for families. You've prayed for me. And so I personally want to say thank you. I receive it. We receive it. Your works have, have just continue to continue, keep us all strong and connected. And so with that, I will leave you all with, as I mentioned, and you should have received your newsletter and your Christ in Home book, but the word uh, for today was the time after the Pentecost. And it said, the kingdom of God will be given to a people that produces the fruits of that kingdom. And then the message the day prior said, Jesus, may, do not miss the point. Jesus is Messiah. So what I take from that is first, keep him first. Keep God first in everything you do. Remain faithful, no matter how many distractions are 
poured our way. Remain faithful. And secondly, give all of what God has put into you to give. Be willing to give it and serve him. And when, when you do that, he sees the fruits of our labor. So with that, I just want to say, I hope you all again continue to stay safe, remain safe. I love you. I miss each and every one of you. And I look forward to the time when we're all able to physically join together. But until then, I remain just as connected with you through this virtual environment and will continue to sustain this until we are forever confident that we, when we come together, we are safe and we are able to commune and congregate with each other in a purely 100% safe manner. But until then, we will continue to stay faithful with each other through this environment. All the best to you and God bless. Amen. Let us go to our call of worship that is based on the 23rd Psalm. We gather to worship the Lord who provides all our needs, whether that be rest when we're weary, hope when we're down, guidance when we stray, or courage in the face of death. We will not be afraid, for God is with us. The Lord is our shepherd, lawly standing by us, comforting us, protecting us, and treating us like honored guests. His goodness surrounds us. When we put our trust in the Lord, we see God truly provides. Not just when it's easy, not just today, yesterday, or sometime in the future, but always and forever. Amen. Hear our prayer today. Philippians 4. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. O oh Lord, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and worthy of praise, help us to think about these things. Strengthen us to do what is pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. In such times of pronounced difference and division, O oh God, save us from cruelty and meanness and hatred. Help us to focus ourselves on things that are kind and loving and faith-filled. Yes. And then make us witnesses to your way of justice yes. and your way of righteousness. Yes. O oh, Father, transform us and then transform the world. That is our prayer today. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our opening song this morning is going to be Glory, Glory, Hallelujah, uh, which will be followed by uh, the Old Testament assignment. Uh, and our first lady to come and bring us the uh, first reading of the day, uh, followed by a uh, song from our musicians. Amen. Uh, let us sing together. <laughs>
watching mm -hmm. online right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, good evening if you're watching at nighttime. We welcome you from Miracles of Faith Community Church and Evangelical Lutheran Church in America here in East Oakland. It's my pleasure to read to you a scripture from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1 through 9. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigner's stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, yes. a refuge for the needy in their distress, yes. a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. Yes. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is still. And Isaiah continues by saying, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast. But they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat cows are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Uh, then he said to his servants, and the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here? without a wedding garment. And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This, my friends, is the gospel. Well, we're going to take a few minutes uh, from our scriptures today and ask the musicians if they'll just bring us a word of God in song. And we'll begin the talents that God has given them. And then uh, we'll just reflect on uh, the songs and this word for a minute and have a prayer. And allow you a chance to share your gifts and your tithes and offers to God. Amen. We pray that we have a benediction. May we bless folks in the church and throughout the world to include all worship services. Let us just uh, be led in song right now.
tend to Ahaz and the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah. Rezin, the king of Syria, and Shekau, the son of Benaliah, the king of Israel. They came up to Jerusalem to wage war against them, but they could not conquer it. When the house of David was told, Syria is in league with Ephraim, his heart and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go forth to meet Ahaz, you and the share Jehasha, your son, and at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, on the highway to the foolish field, and say to him, Take heed, be quiet, and do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint, because of these two smoldering stumps, of fire brands. At the fierce anger of Zion and Syria, and the son of Remaliah, because Syria was Ephraim and the son of Remaliah, has advised evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabalia as king in the midst of it. And thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Jezion. And when sixty-five years of Ephraim will be broken to pieces, so that it will no longer be a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz. He said, Ask the sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shore, as high as heaven. But Ahab said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. All oh, foolish men, we have need in this nation. Amen. One that don't even have to speak and apply recognizes him as stupidity at the top of his head. And the fly he was our comfort, uh, where there was waste. In intelligence and ignorance, on the right side of the head of uh, even a leader, uh, there Isaiah is speaking. Uh, don't put God to the test. Uh, the test is not how much power you have on earth, but how much power God has in heaven. Uh, Judah was just a symbol of God showing the power that men take upon themselves. That establishes the brutality of the way the world looks. But God's world doesn't look like that. God's world looks like a feast for anybody to come and eat at. Good and bad, even those without clothes are still invited. Go to the highways and the byways and bring me anybody to sit at my table. Well, the, the tables are empty today, uh, Brown. Uh, the only feast that will take place uh, those that are invited to come uh, that's there is a duty and intellectual impoverishment of sound mind. Uh, I uh, dare say today that every woman in America should be ashamed, should be in anguish, should be uh, in hurt emotionally of pain of a white man calling a sister a monster. In the communist, that's the devil talking, folks. Yes, yes. Well, uh, uh, Elijah, uh, Muhammad, uh, we need a uh, sound word uh, from Allah. Uh, we know that Yahweh has bitten his ear to hear what is being done to Israel. God is looking at America like he's looked at Jerusalem. Here is a power base where we're good and the fantasy of love is to take place. And yet, we're grounded on a train, bound not for glory, yeah. but for a place where no other man, as they said, on Star Trek has ever been before. Yeah. Uh, Captain Smirk, they took your show off the air. After your colleague kissed that black woman, uh, they put snow cover on the TV screens in six states in the South, so white people would see this white man 
this is this black woman. I dare to say it today. Yeah. Don't say anything. Is the idiotic, irregular, ignorant, any idiot of a man that carries those weapons upon two the steps and into the legislative house of the state of Michigan and threatens and decries and even marches toward violence because of the earmarking of the unplugged love that's not in the sound mind of a president who don't even put down these uh, uh, boys that have this uh, Nazism, this, this Hitler hate, this, this, this round collar. Uh, these chauvinistic, these malicious, you know, their the mouths are filled with the vile and the venom that even snakes turn them away from. Yeah. And yet, they would even want a, a plan, a, a blueprint, to kidnap the leader, born for yeah. a democracy, the government state. Yeah. These are the folks that even uh, it hurt me. Uh, that even in, in, in a debate uh, with the uh, Messiah and, and the other kings of uh, uh, Isaiah, uh, there in uh, Judah, uh, uh, there is a debate on that on that stage. Yeah. You rude, dishonorable, disrespectful, yeah. disfigured, dismount the victims of a man would be rude. Uh, what we know as God's world, God's earth, God's global being, uh, many was called Mother Nature. <laughs> every mama, every grandmother, yeah. every woman with blood running from the bottom of her feet to the top of her head should be upset and anguish that he just wasn't talking to her. the vice presidential captain in that family. He talked to every woman that walked the ground of this earth. Particularly in America. And we go back to even Jesus saying uh, he, he wasn't dressed to be on that stage, because if he was, then the fire would have stayed in his head so long. Come on. <laughs> but there was some gnashing at that weed, that fix of evil, that hate. Mm -hmm. And don't let me get started yeah. on that barn over in the White House. Oh boy. Mm. That hate. Those pictures. See, if the press is talking about it, I can't do it. All right. mm -hmm. If Pope can put up with it, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, if North Korea can walk with it, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, black folks, it's time to rise up. Not because of Aaron Taylor or George Floyd or Oscar Grant, but because God mm -hmm. is not happening. COVID-19, 
uh, there being a greater presence in those who carry weapons to the state house of a government body. Yeah. There are those who have landed in our point lines. And there are those who don't have a citizenship card in one nation that are deprived the courage to walk into another nation. Mm. Oh, the political endeavors of ICE this week of going around and arresting and removing the discovery of men and women in an unlegislated manner. Put them in vans and in trucks and on buses, take them away from their families, move them from the head of the household to care for the children, from a far distance, giving them the opportunity to say goodbye. This has not been a good one. Uh, but the, the prophet uh, cries out, God will not be tested by the flavors of leadership that's in this nation. It's time for God to call on his holy witnesses to take their Bibles and use them as a weapon. Yeah. Let them become the weapon, the, the instrument, the vehicle of change. And let them preach the word of God from God's word. And let us not bow down to audiences that like or don't like what God is. God said, you are my people, and I am your God. And he's a God that has shown us through the generations that he's a God of forgiveness. But the wrath of man is in man's hand, not in God's hands. God doesn't declare ugly on anybody. God does not send evil on anybody. God does not bring plagues just on any nation. God does not delay food in all the mouths of all the sweltering of love. No, he's a God that sits high but looks low. He's a God that can see every valley that the shepherd might walk through. He's a God that might go through a rooftop to save a soul. Hallelujah. He's a God that might stand out of wherever a woman is not walking and offer them the opportunity of salvation. Yes, yes. He's a God that would die at Calvary. That his love might be the sustainer to be free. And by his grace, I'll say it. By his baptism, I'll say it. By his mercy, I'll say it. By his anointing, I'll say it.
Oh, that great name, that, that glorious name, that forgiving name, that, that name that died, that I might have life, the name of Jesus, and eternal. Shall confess that he is Lord, and every knee shall bow, and every prayer shall enlist the guidance of the word of the Apostle Paul when he said, Do not be with me in well doing, or in due season you shall reap that which you sow. Well, I want you to know today, about that in two hours. Uh, that day it's going to once again uh, have a super highway of COVID upon the lives of 2,000, about the same measure of those who appear on Pentecost. And they won't be going there to be saved. They're going there to fill the existence of the rest of what life might have in store. Sweet man of liberty. 
God to bless this church and the ministry and mission of this church for the service that you're giving. I thank God for the stewardship that He sends to this church, but also graciously. Yes. We thank you for the ministry you've given. Hallelujah. So many of our members today. Yes. We got quite a few envelopes this week. Amen. Amen. And uh, we hope that they're going to help take care of all the needs and the service and the work that God has sent. May this honor be the blessing of the gifts of God. May the tithes be used for the Lord of His kingdom. And may the gifts work to keep His mission being executed with love out of the miracles of faith and unity. Church, we ask these blessings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you.